Well, hello. Happy Sunday. It's Ashley here from Lovely Commotion. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, today, I want to talk all about painting. Do your preschoolers love painting? Yeah, drop me a, a, a comment there because I know mine absolutely do. And I think the reasoning behind this is the fact that at home, a lot of them aren't painting. Um, it tends to be more of a messy activity. And so I hear lots of parents telling me they can go do that at school with you. And I take that challenge very seriously. And we definitely love to paint, whether it's on the easel, whether it's on the table, we love painting. And so today I really wanted to talk to you about painting with unusual tools. So other than a paintbrush beyond the paintbrush and painting on different materials. So on a, beyond the canvas, right? Beyond our normal paper canvas. And so I have two lists full of ideas for you. And so my goal was to help you maybe put these lists in your lesson planning binder or just up in your classroom to kind of help remind you of some things that you can try and use in your process art. And that way they'll already kind of be done for you and you're not having to search for ideas. But the main reason I absolutely love painting with things other than paintbrushes. Now, painting with paintbrushes is great too. I feel like it's beneficial, but I also feel like we can take it one step further because when we move beyond the paintbrush and invite children to paint with unusual tools, it just kind of opens up this whole different world of creativity and the senses, right? So they're challenged when they're using these unusual tools. They miss, they have to make these choices on how to use them because it's not always very obvious in a paintbrush. We generally pick it up by the handle and we use the bristle side. If they tried doing it backwards, they would quickly learn that that wouldn't work. But in some of the things that we might provide to them, like a fork, right? Or even, um, a fly swatter, how are they going to use it? Are they going to rub it around? Are they going to smack with it? Are they going to scrape with it? Or are they just going to kind of um, press it on the paper and be done? Like they have to really figure out how they're going to use it. And so they're predicting how the tool will react to them. And they have to kind of plan out like, what do I want to use with this? And how do I, how do I want to make this work? And so that's a lot of problem solving going on. And on top of that problem solving, painting with unusual tools makes their fine motor muscles adjust, right? They're used to holding the paintbrush a certain way and that feels comfortable. It feels normal. And then when they're getting a different kind of tool that they're now trying to paint with, different muscles are going to be engaged because they're having to use the tool in a different way, maybe hold it in a different way. And that can be a challenge as well, but it can be a good challenge because many of them want that experience of painting. And so painting with different tools provides them with those opportunities for problem solving and using different muscles in their fine motor fingers here. And maybe even in the backs of their shoulders here too, if you're using it at the easel. So I kind of wanted to just tell you some of my favorite tools to use to paint. And these are not things that you have to go buy at Lakeshore or wherever, you know how they have those really cool like brushes that have ends that are all different. Some of them are like spongy. Some of them are like loofah-y. You don't have to go buy those for them to be able to paint with something different. You can just look around your school, look around your house, look around the Dollar Tree for some amazing stuff. So I want to talk about tools that we can do use to go beyond the paintbrush and then also ways that we can provide other canvases for children to paint on other than paper. Okay, because paper is usually our easy go-to, but every once in a while we could we could definitely throw in a different type of canvas because some of these canvases may be smoother, may be rougher, may create friction with whatever kind of painting instrument they're using. And so it may also take some trial and error and some problem solving skills to use different kinds of canvases. So just to start, I do have these. This one is the Beyond the Paintbrush and this one is Beyond the Paper. And they're basically just a list 
of ideas for you. And I have a link to those. It's free in my TPT store. And I just wanted to provide you with something where you could just stick it up in your classroom or stick it in your lesson planning binder and just go, okay, we haven't tried painting with a whisk yet. So I'm going to grab a whisk and we're going to paint with that and see what that looks like. I also just want to drop, let you know that I tend to, when I am looking at bringing in different tools and different canvases, I try to make sure they're at the easel, but sometimes that just doesn't work. Um, one that definitely doesn't work is the marbles. I can't really figure out how to do marbles at the easel unless I'm adding in a magnet wand where they could do that. But even then they may drop and roll and then you've got paint rolling all over the floor. So some of them just aren't feasible in uh, at the actual easel. But if they are, I like to add them there because it kind of lets them go in and out of that center as they wish, rather than all trying to maybe do that activity at once. Cause once one child sees you're painting at the table, they all want to paint. So, and I also love the added benefit of the easel because if their arm is up and they're having to work with that tool, they're also working on some muscles back here and those muscles will better help them stabilize for handwriting when they're in school and when they're sitting a little bit longer and even just um, using computers. Right. And so, Another reason to love the vertical space, but not all of them can be done vertically in a safe or less messy way. Um, I don't mind some mess, but I certainly don't want it tracked all over the carpet area or anything like that. So here's some of my favorite ones. I love grabbing toothbrushes. Um, I get that, you know, you get them at the dentist and I don't use those ones. We, we have electric toothbrushes. So I always make sure to get them that way I can use them later for painting. And, um, they're also great for removing stains right out of your carpet, but I love to use toothbrushes because there's lots of different effects that they can make with the paint and the toothbrush because of the bristles. So toothbrush is a super easy one. If you can remember to collect them, forks are really easy because they can definitely try different ways. They can turn the fork over and kind of scrape or they can turn it over and kind of stamp. One thing I always make sure I don't do is model anything for them because when I'm providing them with these for a process art, I don't want them all to look the same. I want them to learn through the process. I want them to, to explore through the process, be creative through the process, and it wouldn't be process art if I was showing them how to do it. And so I want to make sure that I just set it out and when questions arise, what do we do? I can kind of just um, encourage creation, right? Well, how do you want to paint with that? What do you think? What is What makes sense in your brain? How do you want to try anything, right? Um, I like to use toy cars. Sometimes we'll paint with toy cars and you know, that, that makes more sense to them. Run the wheels through the paint, roll it on. That generally makes sense to them, but other things don't. Other things don't. Um, using a comb, they're not always sure what you, do you want me to dip the whole thing? Do you just want me to dip the, the, um, bristles or whatever you want to call those things? They, sh they're not totally sure what you want of them. And I really like to encourage them. It's not what I want for you to do. It's what your brain tells you, you want to try out with this tool. So I don't put limitations on the tools. I just don't. Um, I put them out there and I encourage them to explore them. So combs and brushes are really good. Uh, toy cars. We love to do toy cars. I also love to do them on the big butcher paper and that way they can run them a lot farther. We've even elevated one end of the paper so that we are um, learning about ramps and painting at the same time. I just kind of set that up and go, here's this, you can use it on this paper and see where that takes them. Uh, potato mashers are fun because they create a cool stamping design, but many times you'll find they'll also move it around. And then I also like the idea that sometimes it doesn't work and they'll need to ask for a new canvas. So sometimes in the past we've had potato mashers and they're pushing and they're, they're swirling them and it's creating a rip in the paper. And so, that didn't work. So we, we did trial and error. So now I need a new paper because that didn't work. Or maybe that's what they were going for. And so lots of trial and error with that. Sponges are good. Grab them at the Dollar Tree, kind of cut them up that way and get a little more use out of them. Ball up some foil. They can hang on to that and paint with the foil how they wish. 
medicine droppers are always great when I am in for some messy fun, which is usually this spring kind of talking about weather and rain. Excuse me. I will put paper up on the easel and let them drip drop paint off of there. I just um, put some water in the paint, make it a little bit easier for the medicine dropper to suck up and they get to watch as it drips and they get to learn like how much pressure I put in, how much paint I put in. And I try to have something under there to collect all that paint. Um, not always the easiest thing to do and there's, there's a little bit more cleanup, but it is one that is well loved and I love watching how they kind of move through the activity of what they want it to look like and what they want it to do. So medicine droppers are great. We use squeeze bottles as well. I generally, since they hold a lot more volume of paint, I don't do them on the easel because I'm just afraid of the um, large mess that it will make. Not afraid of messes, but large messes can be a little dangerous because then you might have little feet stepping in them and falling. And so I always do that on the table, but squeeze bottles, like, you know, like the old ketchup bottles. I found some at Sam's Club that they were selling in like a set of six and they just squeeze bottles. And those are interesting too, because they are having to figure out how to even use the tool. You have to turn it over. You have to tap down the paint. You have to squeeze. You're using a lot of squeezing muscles. So lots of process going into that. Uh, bubble wrap is super fun. If you get something with bubble wrap, you can even make like a bubble wrap mitten, right? And like kind of tape these sides and they put their hand in it and they can use the bubble wrap as they wish. We also love to do squeegees, another one that is super fun. Um, it works well with blending and, and um, blending colors. And what will this look like if I do this? That one's super fun. They love that one. Um, loofahs, loofahs from the Dollar Tree. They create a really cool pattern. Cotton ball is easy enough. We always like to use food. We're using um, some apples, some dried corn to roll those around. Painted with carrots before. They found that that was not something they really enjoyed because it was difficult for them, um, a full-size carrot. Uh, we did pumpkin lids. So when we cut off the top of a pumpkin, we used the lid with the, with the stem handle. They painted with those. Marshmallows, feathers. Feathers are a good one to put at the easel. So are marshmallows, spatulas, um, a scrub brush from the Dollar Tree. Yarn. Yarn is a fun one because that one is super interesting to watch what they do with and kind of what their brain thinks that they should try with the yarn. Pool noodles kind of cut up into circles. Those are fun too. Lego blocks, always, always fun. Um, an inflated balloon, super fun. Spoons, craft sticks, marbles. Again, I usually do them in a shallow box. Cookie cutters, always good. Leaves that we collect on a leaf hunt. Uh, spray bottles. Spray bottles are super fun. Really like to do that when it's warm outside. Usually use more of the watercolor and lots of <laughs> more water than color and hang it on the fence. Hang a big old piece of Baltimore paper on the fence and that way um, it contains that mess a little bit because they sure do love to use spray bottles. Um, even a fun idea with spray bottles is just to use on a hot day the spray bottle on the sidewalk, right? Because then it will evaporate pretty quickly and they can make paintings that way. And there is virtually no mess because it's all going to evaporate. So some ideas for beyond the paintbrush. Those are just some ideas. Obviously there are so many options, but I want to give you just a quick list that you could reference. And if you haven't tried some of these, these might be great to add to your easel center or create um, kind of an invitation to to process art at your table, maybe in the morning. That's generally what I'll, I will do. I will kind of set all the things up, be ready. And when they come in, they can explore that as they wish. Um, I also want to talk about canvas ideas. So while going beyond the paintbrush is awesome, so is going beyond the paper. And this isn't feasible all the time, right? Um, we still generally use paper as our main source of our canvas. Obviously, because it's reasonable in price, um, it's reasonable in size, and it's pretty easy for me to get my hands on. Uh, I love different sizes of paper when we can get that. I love different thicknesses of paper, different um, textures of paper, but you know, some of that just isn't always available. But I have loved doing foil. Foil is a very fun one for kids to try out because it's super slippery, and depending on what type of paint and um, tool you use, 
It can be really smooth and glide really nicely. Uh, the quick sticks, those tempera paint sticks work wonderful in foil, but so does regular paint too. And so they can kind of see how that reacts. Wax paper is another one. Coffee filters. Um, many of us have done the, the coloring, the coffee filter with um, markers, seeing what water does to it. You can even do these. With, we like to do them with um, liquid watercolor and learn how colors mix together that way. And we've even painted it on a stick, grabbed a big stick when we were doing um, some learning about the outdoors. We grab a stick and we painted that stick together as a class. So that was fun too. Uh, leaves, definitely painted leaves before. Rocks, easy one to come by. They can go on a rock hunt. They can, they can um, paint on those rocks very easily. Cardboard, just your Amazon boxes, right? It just creates another opportunity for them to paint on a different material. And so some of them are obviously like a little bit bumpy. You could leave them in box form and have them paint them more in a 3D way, or you could cut them into um, shapes or squares and have them use them that way. Also great for a painting tool. Ice cubes, we love to paint on ice cubes. We have an ice maker and I love to just scoop ice onto the tray provide the paint and watch them go to town and watch them mixing colors and what happens when the ice starts to melt. And um, that's a very fun one. Sandpaper. Sandpaper is more difficult because it doesn't cooperate the way that normal paper does. And so that is always a fun one to that and fabric, old fabric is a fun one to um, kind of explore with because it doesn't react like paper does. We also like to paint on pumpkins, obviously. Um, you can paint on carrots, snow. Snow is a fun one. If you get snow paper plates, wrapping paper, old wrapping paper, flip it over, and most of them are quite smooth. So that's a fun one with a um, larger footprint, right? You can do some maybe some larger art on that. Paper bags, you got old CDs since no one really uses those anymore. You know, flipping them over, old DVDs, whatever, using that reflective surface as a canvas, paper towels, um, is surprisingly exciting for kiddos. Uh, clear, I like to use like clear sheets left over from my laminating film. If I have like a chunk that, you know, I didn't get, nothing was laminated on. Those are great because they're clear. You can do those on the light table. Um, those are super fun. Newspapers, if you still find those around anywhere, is good. Uh, wood blocks, if you have some just rent like my husband will do a lot of um building of some sort and he will have just scraps of wood those are always fun for them to paint on too because it reacts different it's going to suck up that paint more a uh, felt felt is kind of one of those fabrics that is not easy to paint on foam foam is a little bit easier post-it notes shrink down their canvas and see how they handle that sentence strips make their canvas long and see how they handle that bulletin board paper, butcher paper, where it's bigger, right? And they're able to do more things on it. And maybe that's a whole class art canvas. Um, we've done that many a times too. File folders are great. If you got some old file folders, um, in the past, I, I had some, I had a mom that worked at a office and she just was like, we have all these file folders we can't use anymore. And, you know, they have these random things on the tab, but we aren't using them any, anymore. Well, they, they make great, great canvases and also they're already pre-folded so you could definitely do the smash art um learning about symmetry i mean great things there um we do ornaments usually in um the holiday season plastic cups and those are fun to later use on the light table if you get the clear ones because then they it lights up their paintings so that's super fun too old calendars the boxes kind of create something that they can work with in graph paper things like that i mean Basically, if you are comfortable with them painting on it, um, then it's it's a great thing to paint on, right? So both of these lists are in my TBT store. Feel free to grab them. I would love for you to grab them. Love for you to try out some of these ideas. If you try them, I would absolutely love it if you dropped a picture here on the lovely commotion page. And um, I just love to see what y'all are up to. And if you have any great ideas about some tools, or canvases that go beyond the paintbrush and the paper, please leave them because I'm always looking for new ideas, always trying to have something new up my sleeve. And so 
please feel free to grab these. Leave us a comment. If you got some ideas of your own, I would love, 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 love to hear them. If you do some of these, would love to see pictures. Um, I generally ask that you keep the children's faces out of them, but um, yes, would love to see what you guys are up to because process art is so, so cool when you really start to observe what their brain is doing and how they thought that through. And many times it's not the way you would have done it. And so it's surprising and it's engaging and it's exactly what our little kiddos need. So if you haven't tried this type of art, I really encourage you to look into it a little bit more and maybe just try one of these things very simply, right? Um, try picking up some toothbrushes and, and hand them to them to paint with. Um, pretty simple, pretty easy, but the strength of process art is in the process and their thought process to go through it and their problem solving and their just amazing creativity. So again, go ahead and grab these for free. I hope they're helpful to you and I hope you have a great Sunday and maybe doing some process art tomorrow. All right. See you guys.